Okay, we are about to meet a doctor who follows his own advice, something rare indeed. Dr. David Jacob, welcome, sir. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Now, I can't believe it from looking at you because you're a very fit man, but I'm told that you lost the equivalent of a child somewhere, 55 pounds. I did. Uh, back about eight or nine years ago, I went to the health fair at the hospital and my blood pressure was markedly elevated. And um, I'm the chief of cardiology there, so they looked at me like, oh my goodness, you know, you're going to you're going to have a heart attack. So I got embarrassed, went to my doctor, and uh, he wanted to give me medication. I said, hold off for a little bit. Uh, let me just do my own thing. So I basically ate 50% of whatever I was eating. Um, cut back on the fats, eat more lean protein, you know, chicken, fish, vegetables, salads. And really what I tell my patients also, and what I did was I cut out the junk fluids. You'd be surprised how many calories are juices, sodas, things like that. Sports drinks. Well, that's, that that, I'm glad you brought that up. It's amazing. I don't want to get in trouble with anybody, but those <laughs> sports drinks, and I don't want to name any specific ones, are really not healthy unless you're you know, an avid exercise If you're running person. a marathon, you need all that glucose. If not, skip it. Absolutely. A lot of calories, a lot of salt, right? Sodium is in that, which is good, like you said, if you're sweating a lot. But for your average child who's sitting on the bench and not playing very much, you, know, you don't need a big jug of you know, fluids like that. Now, is it our lifestyles that have changed? Like, my dad didn't have to exercise. He didn't have to watch what he ate. And he stayed fit and slim his entire life. But he was out there on Saturday mowing the grass. On Sunday, he would paint the fence. He, he would walk into town and walk to the train station in the morning to go to work. Is it our lifestyle that's changed? Well, I, I, th I think our lifestyle, I think a lot of things have changed. I, I, I think if you go to Europe and you walk around, you know, you have a good meal. Uh, you have good meals, you eat well, but you walk everywhere, do everything. You don't gain any weight while you're there. And the people there are generally thinner. I think the American lifestyle certainly has changed to eating larger portions of fatty foods, sugary sodas and drinks, and not moving as much. I think that's absolutely true. And the French paradox might not be the cheese and the wine. It actually might be that they move, as you say. Yeah. You hear so much conflicting information. Eat a lot of carbs. Don't eat too many carbs. Exercise aerobically every day lift weights, you know, what's a person to do? I mean, it feels like you could take every supplement in the world, fish oil, multivitamin, you right. know, right? We're right. overwhelmed. Well, you know, I think what I did is what I tell people to do. First of all, I don't use the word diet at all. Nothing is a diet. It's a lifestyle change. It's something you need to stick with. I don't really limit myself of any particular food category that much. Maybe, you know, fats, you know, uh, red meats, cheeses. I would cut back on fats. But otherwise, it's all about moderation and portion control and then trying to get a lifestyle where you can fit in exercise. It's very important. What I tell my patients is you not only have to worry about the fuel you're putting in, but you have to burn the motor, too. So um, I advocate exercising 50 minutes five times a week. I have the 50 plus 5 rule. Um, I've been able to exercise quite a bit now, and I'm, this year I'm going to be doing the New York City Half Marathon, the Triathlon, and the Marathon all in the same year. And that went from not being able to run around the high school track to being able to do that in about eight years. And this literally has transformed your life, yeah. it, not only on the outside though, but on the inside. What does this mean for your heart? Are you actually reversing potential heart disease? Well, I don't think you could say reversing, you know, heart disease, and genetics plays, plays a role in this, but certainly you are, you know, a lot more healthy. If your weight is good um, and your arteries are clean and pumping and your heart's pumping good, I mean, that's certainly good for you. No one can predict exactly what's going to happen, but, you know, if you, if you don't, you're avoiding diabetes, you know, you're ex avoiding hypertension, high blood pressure, that is, keeping your weight under control. Those are the risk factors that cause heart disease, so theoretically you should be, you know, holding it off at least. All right, the doctor's orders are cut the fats, cut the calories, cut the quantity, and move. And move. Moving right. is moving very important. Dr. David Jacob, thank you very much. I appreciate you. your time here this morning.